Welcome back, Cadmus. Today we're taking on a really interesting challenge. I recently saw a fantastic video showing how to model a table in SolidWorks, and it got me thinking: How would we tackle the same design challenge in Onshape? In fact, I'm going to show you a unique approach that starts with no sketch at all. The real hero of this video, however, is a feature you might not use often: the reapply feature option within Onshape's linear pattern. This is a secret weapon for placing features accurately on complex or non-planar surfaces, and it's perfect for this table. I'll link to the original SolidWorks video in the description so you can see their approach. Let's get started. I will start by defining some variables, one for the height, give that a 388 millimeters, then one for the width of one quarter of this, and that'll be 444. One more for the number of legs in one quarter in one row. That will be a number of eight. And then one for the thickness of the walls. And I'll make that four millimeters. All right. Next, I will define one mate connector, make that independent of any entity, and start moving this. And why I will um, move that by the width and Z by the height, and then I will rotate this around the X axis by 90 degrees. So there it is. Next, I will define a bridging curve from the origin matching that position to that mate connector and give that a magnitude of 0.6. Next, I'll use the routing curve starting at that very endpoint or that mate connector at that point and then walk in the x direction with that width value. I will model one ruled surface with that routing curve al along aligned with the direction of that front plane in that direction and then um, with the mid plane definition of the front plane and the right plane, Flip, flipping the alignment maybe so it intersects like this. I can then mirror this um, curve and that surface across. Plane number one. Now I'll hide the mate connector and the planes and define with the fill surface command with that edge, just position, and that edge with the tangency to that surface. Continue with that edge 
and this surface and finalize with this here as a new um, body. Yeah, the last one again, just position condition. Right, to keep things simple, I will delete those two faces, which we won't need anymore. And now I will make a sketch on the top plane. With you, I project this vertex and then take my midpoint triangle, pressing Alt to make that a square and make that coincident with that vertex. And now for the dimension of that, I take um, the width and divide it by the number of legs. Next is the extrude of um, a thin extrude and make that to the inside with that wall and with that thickness. And for end condition, I'll take this face. I'll make that a little lighter so it's easier to see. So now I'll define a linear pattern, but not of parts. Instead, I'll take the feature pattern, take this pattern, the extrude number one, or direction. I'll take that edge and the distance is the width divided by the number of legs. And the instances count again is the number of legs. And then I'll take the second direction and do this likewise. So width divided by number of legs, number of legs, reapply feature. And there, there it is. So every time we use that com command, the end condition of the initial extrude is recalculated. I'll hide that surface and just make a Boolean of all these. Then with that surface, I'll use the transform and make a um, translation in the Z direction of 88. Well, minus 88. And then just take the split command of this part with that surface. I don't want to keep both sides, just that one. And finally, we can make a circular pattern of parts around that edge adding to part number one 
and there is our table base. And there it is, Cadmus. Our table, modeled entirely in on shape, starting with the surface at no sketch and using the incredible reapply feature in our linear pattern. You can see how this tool saved us a ton of work and ensured all the lags were perfectly aligned with our surface. Now for the big question. If you saw the original SolidWorks video, what did you think of our approach? What other hidden gem features on shape have saved you from a modeling headache? And how would you have tackled the same table design? Drop all your comments, questions, and alternative solutions below. I read every single one, and your feedback is what makes this community awesome. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Academist channel for more advanced on-chip tutorials. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching.